For almost seven years, I worked in a research lab where my only link to the outside world was a telephone and a radio that played as much static as it did music. I felt the need for a change and so I decided to leave it all behind to study documentary filmmaking. By day, I'm a full-time student again and at night I work to pay the bills. I was initially reluctant to say yes when I first heard about my current job, but curiosity got the better of me. It's with a sex agency. I just received a call from the agency. I'm given my instructions and I'm told how much the client is paying tonight. It's almost 3 a.m. as I head off to work. This sex agency has male and female sex workers and everyone has a working name to protect real identities and perpetuate fantasies. My connection to this agency is someone whose code name is Medax. I initially requested Meat Cleaver as my name, but the agency told me that one homicidal maniac on their books is enough. And this is Miss Emily. Hey. Hi, it's how James, is it? Yes, how are you? Fine, how about yourself, darling? Not too bad. I bet this is the first time you've ever picked up someone like this before. Well, perhaps. But we'll, uh... I've done maybe one or two calls uh, in the past, so... Well, the uh, client tonight, uh, is it, um, do, you, do you know this client, or...? I mean, no, no, I, I, I don't know him. There are some that are definitely regulars. I mean, there's, there's one poor old fellow. Yeah. Poor old love, he's, I think he's fucking fallen for me. <laughs> he's, oh, really? he's been phoning repeatedly, and um, there's another lovely man, he's, he's very obese, poor thing, very lonely, shit, he's so lonely, and I always try and fit him in, I always try, because he needs me, well, they all, does he, does he demand a lot of your attention? No, he's not very demanding, not like some, some of them, oh, there's some, there's some seriously loony tunes out there, darling, I'll tell you, oh, give me an example. Like, well, what, like, am I going to have to handle any of these loony tunes, or...? Oh, well... Because, you know, I haven't really done much of this before. You'll do just fine. You'll do just fine. So where will you be parked, James? Um, just over there, I think. Or is it a car park over there? Okay, okay. Well, have fun. Oh, You know where I'll be if there's any, any trouble? Trouble. Okay. Never. <laughs> Take care. You have a nice hour, James. Thanks. See you. See you soon. I never had a mentor when I was working in the research field, but here I have Medax. We arranged to rendezvous for a chat during his waiting hour at their client's location. I'm aware of the potential hazards of being a driver and guardian for sex works on the job. For instance, if there was trouble, I'm quite prepared to kick doors down and make a run for it with the worker. But really, what could I do if I was confronted by an angry 250 pound client? Or worse still, an angry, naked 250 pound client? Hey yo. I'm alright, how are you? Doing good. A lot of people, when I first started doing this, were saying, you know, you must be crazy. You could get stabbed, shot, you get beat up. One of the things they asked me is, you know, did you receive any training? I told them there's absolutely nothing. You just, no. they just get thrown into it. What, have you had any training? No, well, I used to work security and stuff like that, but I think a lot of people see too many movies. Like, we're very uh, stringent on people. Like, we won't go to a job unless they've got a phone. It's the kind of business that you don't want to send um, you work it to the wrong door, like when some of these places you can't even see the numbers on them or they're half full and off and things, that's pretty frustrating, especially when the client's ringing up the home base and saying, ah, well, where's my girl? I've been waiting an hour and a half sort of thing. I tell a lot of the workers, um, 
that if anything goes wrong, grab anything and throw it through the front window because a lot of people's bedrooms are in the, the front sort of two rooms and by all means, like, I'll hear that. And so I'll be there straight away. Do you ever have to kick in the door or anything? <laughs> nah. like that? um, That's what they told me the interview. Yeah. Might, I might have to kick a few doors down. Yeah, no, nah, I've never had anything that serious. Nothing? Nah. What are the more serious ones? Um, when the cops turn up, that's pretty amusing. Um, it's hard to uh, keep a low profile when there's two police cars with all their lights shining on you and stuff like that in your car. So you sort of have to get out and explain who you are. And they don't hassle you? No, nah, I always give them a female card. I don't give them the tranny cards or the uh, the boys' cards. What do you think would happen if you did? <laughs> I don't know. They might think they'd be a good story to the station, I reckon, if I gave them a tranny card. Some six-foot tranny walks out <laughs> after a job. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, words of wisdom. Words of wisdom? Okay, um, if you have a problem with a job, you just pull up in their um, driveway with your high beams on so they know there's a car there and you just keep touching the horn, keep beeping the horn if they're not giving you the money or something like that. And a lot of people, after five minutes of you beeping the horn and they're sort of seeing their neighbours' lights come on and stuff like that, they'll come out and they'll give you the money in a hurry. Um, their wife might have gone away and they've got to fulfil a fantasy. They might have even like a foot fetish or um, like a golden shower fetish or something like that. A what? A uh, golden shower fetish. Uh, <laughs> I'm not explaining that to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was going to ask you, what do you normally do during an hour? Read a book, play a bit of music, sort of quite low. But, um, yeah. I guess it gives you time to think about everything else you've got to do. and You philosophise about life? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Probably too much. <laughs> The sex industry brings up images of seedy city streets, ghettos, drugs and dirty alleyways. But it hasn't been like that for me. My calls have brought me to a number of Melbourne's inner and outer suburbs, which at four in the morning are all very quiet and serene, regardless of the socio-economic background of the postcode. It's interesting that most of the workers I drive either live in fancy inner city apartments or our homeowners themselves. It's also interesting that when I asked the agency, I was told that regardless of suburb, January, February and March are comparatively slow months because all the fathers have just spent their money on uniforms and school books for their children. Whether that's true or not, the workers I drive often describe their clients as lonely or marginalised. I occasionally spend some of my hour staying awake strolling through the neighbourhood. But most of the time, I'm on my laptop working on homework for screenwriting class. The hour is up and I can't wait to get going. Time flies hey. when you're driving home. You okay? He was an animal. <laughs> oh, really? I wish you'd have seen him. No, no, maybe I didn't. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Fuck what a phallus. That's all I can say. <laughs> I feel like I've had an express train there. <laughs> but a nice man. Are you okay? Yeah. I think my erratic driving damp in high spirits though. You okay? Yeah. That reminds me. I have to get some car seat covers. Well, that's it, really. In spite of my preconceptions, the work of driver and guardian for sex workers is more than just one for the daredevil thrill seeker. But on the other hand, as Medax says, it becomes just like another job after a while. I haven't got time to think too much about that, though. I'm tired, need sleep, my car smells like vomit, and screenwriting class starts in a few hours. Mm -hmm.